African countries are unlikely to reduce extreme poverty to below 3% by 2030. There is a huge potential in Africa to make significant strides to reduce extreme poverty in the coming decades, but more realistic targets are needed. Now, over the past 20 years, there has been remarkable progress in reducing poverty. However, Africa contains the largest remaining share of global extreme poverty. Approximately 400 million Africans are still living in extreme poverty. That is on less that is less than uh, living on less than US one twenty five dollar a day. Joining us to make sense of all of this is Wilson Erumembo. He's a senior economist in the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Thank you, Mr. Rumebo, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And also joining us is Abel Usim. He is the founder of Youth Empowerment and Growth Initiative Lagos, Yegi for short. Thank you, Mr. Usim, for also joining us. All right, so before we connect to him, let's begin with you, Wilson. Uh, reading some of the commitment yeah. laid out by the president at the recent UN uh, Assembly, the question that arises is what makes this set of pledges different to others that have gone before now? Well, um, one thing um, to note is that, of course, um, poverty has been a major challenge within the continent and even in Nigeria. And given that Nigeria is the largest uh, economy, the largest has the largest population within the continent, it also has the largest number of, of poor people um, in the continent. So that tells you that there is an urgent need for government to be able to set this as a priority to say um, how, how best can we be able to reduce these numbers of, of, of people living um, below the poverty line. So I think it's it's just a matter of necessity that the government is um, made that statement as to um, wanting to reduce um, close to 100 million people out of poverty within the, within the next decade. Mm -hmm. Whether that is possible or not is a whole um, debate entirely. But again, it's, a sense, it, 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 it's needed. I mean, it, it should be the priority for every government, including that of Nigeria. Right. Uh, we're still trying to establish contact uh, with uh, Abel Usim, who will be joining us in this conversation. But before we do that, you know, um, what, what would you say is the key to eradicating poverty in Nigeria? We've been having this conversation. There are data figures suggesting that, you know, we are still at a very bad place. What's the way forward? Well, um, first of all, I think um, it is very clear and several reports agencies have, have said and showed that um, the fastest way out of poverty is through jobs. Um, we can, yes, government can, in a sense, introduce a lot of all these support programs for the poor and vulnerable citizens. Um, but how sustainable are these programs? So it, it then means that jobs is the most sustainable way out of poverty. And so what we must then do um, if you look at the past decade, the economy has expanded, particularly in the early 2000s. We've been able to expand at a at growing, at a faster rate. But then um, this also means that even poverty and unemployment were also increasing during that, that period. So we must, as much as we, we must try to improve growth, economic growth within the eco economy, uh, we must also see how to ensure that growth is inclusive, uh, is inclusive. And what that means is paying attention to some key sectors that, you know, have the potential to employ more people, sectors that have the potential to be able to, you know, ensure that people generate income for themselves. And I think that's um, particularly one area that we haven't really done much um, in the last few decades. So as um, directly to answer your question, I think issues relating to how businesses can grow, particularly the small businesses. Um, what are the intervention uh, programs in, in place to be able to increase uh, level of productivity across several businesses, uh, whether it's in the agriculture, manufacturing, construction, because these are sectors that you know have the potential to employ larger number of people in the economy. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot more emphasis needs to be directed towards, um, first of all, achieving high economic growth. Secondly, um, ensuring that growth is inclusive. By that, I mean paying attention to the sectors that contribute to growth. And thirdly, is on productivity. Um, to, be en to, to ensure that um, what, whatever resources goes into a sector, we, we are able to generate more and more output out of that 
um, resources or, or investment. Mm. And I think all these three measures would, would go a long way to ensure that Nigerians, you know, are able to secure um, jobs. Um, unfortunately, uh, what that means with COVID, uh, it's going to be a lot more challenging. Currently, we have close to 80 million people, you know, below the poverty line, as estimated uh, by the NBS, which is about 40% of the population. By the end of this year, obviously, it's going to increase. That number would certainly increase. So it's a bit more going to be more challenging at the same time. But then I think government needs to step up and ensure that interventions for these sectors, you know, are, are swift, swiftly implemented. Okay. All right. Let me bring uh, Abel Usim into this conversation. Thank you, Abel, for joining us. Can Abel hear me? All right, we'll, we'll just continue with you, we'll say. I'm afraid that we're not able to connect to him yet. But again, why is the poverty elevation conversation not an optional policy, you know, but rather a pursuit of enlightened self-interest? What's your thought on that? We'll say. Well, I think that, um, yeah, that's relating to the governance issues within the country. Um, so, for instance, uh, you want to make, you want to cite a project um, rather than look at where or where is the optimum or the best place to cite this project, you know, for it to be able to meet its, you know, objectives. Um, so political sentiments then come in. Um, so even on things relating to contracts, you get to. So I think those are those are governance issues that are very critical. Well, they are they are sort of like foundations to every economic or social policy that you have within the country. So um, and 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 I think over the years we've seen that played out across you know different sec different sectoral policies um, and interventions going on. Even there are times when even some of these monies issues of accountability and transparency then come up. So I think. Um, it, it's it's more of a question of the kinds of leaders that we have that have governed uh, the country over the years, and I think right now with with this social and economic implications of poverty, the fact that if you don't build these roads, if you don't give people these jobs, um, at the end of the day they would come back to haunt you. Even you would not be safe if you don't uh, um, invest in healthcare, invest in ed education. At the end of the day, if, I mean, with COVID, for instance, we've seen how a lot of times people would travel out of Nigeria to seek for, you know, some of these health services. But now with COVID, um, you can't go anywhere. So I, I, the, the, the real message there is for you to develop your home. There's no place like home. And if you don't do that, at the end of the day, it will come back um, to haunt you, whatever, whatever your status is in the society. So I think our political leaders need to, um, need to be able to ensure that whatever is meant for the people gets to the people. Um, whatever you, you've committed to ensure that people have good infrastructure, good education, good health care, it, it must be delivered because if, if it doesn't, it would come at a cost to, even to, to those that have neglected or to those that haven't done what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Listen, I think you have put it very well there. You know, whatever is meant for the people gets to the people. L let me connect again now to Abel. I, Abel is now on the line via phone. Abel, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. Good morning, Akene. All right, great. It's Amaka. All right, so we're having the conversation Amaka. around, not to worry about that. <laughs> we're having a conversation mm -hmm. around um, poverty alleviation. And I do know okay. from the work you do, you, you are one of those people who work directly with the poor in the slum. Again, from yeah. your perspective, have you seen any progress in terms of government intervention to alleviate this level of poverty that we're talking about? Um, so far, I have not seen any visible um, progress made by the local government in my own area. Can you hear me? Yes, please. I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, because when we talk about alleviating poverty, we are looking at empowerment, which is the center. And then when it has to do with empowerment, there are different faces for different um, people. You know, you cannot say you are doing empowerment and then you are giving funds and other little things to the poor. So for my own part, I've not seen what the government are doing to actually alleviate poverty, you know, from the community. What they are only doing is distributing palliatives that can only last people for one or two days, not really empowering them and taking them away, you know, from poverty. So essentially... Like, 
Essentially, you are talking of, you are looking at a long-term solution. Yes, a long time. Like, using my NGO as a case study, we have empowered three beggars. Two of them are driving Keken at a three cycle and are earning living from it. That is, take, that is elevating poverty. They are no longer on the streets begging. They are now earning a living through um, driving three cycle. Why the third person is actually into food business. So That's if what I may ask you, if I may ask you, judging from that perspective, the perspective of the man on the street, the man on the ground, what would you say yes. is the key to eradicating poverty in Nigeria? Practically, what should uh, you know our government be doing? So I think the government should work with trusted NGOs because these NGOs work with grassroots people. They can amplify, you know, solutions to what the government can do. Now, every, each person we meet on the street has one or two business they want to venture into. And sometimes these people want to venture into this business. They might not have the skill or the knowledge to go about it. So they should be structured, laid down procedures mm -hmm. like mentoring, you know, and then empowering these people with the right tool, either putting them in um, places where they can learn how to either make clothes, make hair, and other where they can earn a living. Right. So there are no particular keys when it comes when it comes to the LLM, elevating poverty. We can start with empowering them. Empowerment comes in different dimensions, mm. you know, which is mentoring before empowering them with either fund, start of capital, or equipment they will use in, you know, in any living. Right. Gentlemen, uh, Wilson and Abel, thank you so very much for your thoughts this morning and keep safe out there. Thank you.